And God will back it up. It may not back everybody because Jesus spoke and the Pharisees didn't like it. The Pharisees were the only one mad. Everybody else said, we want something new. <laughs> we want something new. How many want something new? Come on. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and they love his Bible. It's new. I know he wants something new. He's always trying to get us something new. I ain't saying nothing no different when he said when I first got saved. See, there's three things God does or uses to guard our hearts. Number one, the word. He uses the word of God. So we got to use the word of God. We don't have to say nothing out of the ordinary, anything that's not theologically sound. We just use the word of God. Number two, he uses prayer. He uses prayer not just to answer you know, all the prayers we have for people, but he uses prayer to shape and mold us. It's a dialogue. It's, it's, it's the supernatural realm coming into the spiritual realm and shaping us for us being supernatural beings because we're the only dual beings on the planet. We're seated in heavenly places and we're also seated in Southside Church right now. Can they say that? So when you pray, it ain't what you're praying for. You can still pray for it, but remember, it's what God said you're praying from. You'll see a change, I promise you. And number three, he uses the Holy Ghost. He uses the Holy Spirit. See, uh, we have to learn how to yield to the Holy Spirit. We have to learn how to yield to the Holy Spirit. He will use us, but he uses understanding in the word. If we don't understand the word, then that means we're not mature. In Galatians 4, he talks about us having a rule of everything, but we're no different than a slave. Why? Because we're immature. They call that nuvios and weos. The, you know, the nuvios being like a, a you know, adalus. Somebody who comes and you can have a position, but you don't really know how to operate in the spiritual realm. Because I learned the difference. I knew how to operate in the church, but I didn't know how to operate in the kingdom. So God had to shift. Say shift. Yeah. So he shifted me. And now I understand the kingdom. The, the kingdom is a little bit different than what we're used to in the, 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 the democracy of America. Amen. In democracy of America, we go by ranks and orders and all that stuff. And, and really, if we really want to do that, the Bible actually says, first in the house of God are apostles. We, we just act like there's no apostle no more. If, if pastor, anybody, he might be an apostle. We don't know. We just don't know the Bible. So the first thing we look for is what? Pastor G. That's the first thing we look for. See, this is a little bit different, but watch the people that catch it. All of a sudden, you're going to be like, wow, look, these guys are moving on a different scale. We have to move according to the precepts of the Bible, not concepts of the leadership. See, Luke 8 says this, I'm coming down toward the end. I started at 1033, 1045. I'll, I'll, I'll go shorter than what Art said. Luke 8 says that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But it also says in Luke 8 that he comes to steal the seed from our heart. The seed from our heart. Do you know that even what we say tonight, the devil will steal the seed? Yeah. You know, the main thing I say, I, I, I'll say scriptures, and I'll look to see who writes them down. Because that's what God, I, I learned that from a powerful man. I got a man that has moved in areas that we've never seen before. We've, we've never seen it before. Uh, no matter where we went, they were like, I've never seen that before. And you know what he taught me? Just stay in the Bible. Most people don't think to use the Bible. I said, you know, that's true, because the first thing we think of is leadership. We want to train, we want people to, to be in place. But the first meeting Jesus ever called wasn't a leadership meeting. It was a prayer meeting. Come on. Mm. The first, he said, go and gather together and pray. And, you know, just stay there until the promise comes. You know, sometimes we don't want to stay there. We don't pray long no more. We pray for a couple of hours to accomplish what? We used to, when I got saved, man, we were, we were 6 a.m. He was talking about having menudo and stuff in the morning and stuff. We don't do that no more. Now we just go and stay till about 12 or 1 and go to Denny's. Mm. Don't even have offerings. You're going to go spend the 20 over there at Denny's. So I don't know, man. I mean, maybe not here, but we're trying to change our culture. Now, ever since I came back, I said, try to change the culture of our church. Amen. Because our founder is saying a lot. I thank him for inviting me in there because I don't get to sit around Pastor Sonny very much. So I watch him when he's talking. And there's a couple of things he said about the stagnant over there in Africa. Because he's excited about that. But then he said the skill of the preacher. That skill sticks out to me. I have a video. I go back and look at it again. I'm trying to encapsulate everything he was talking about up to the point when he said that. But he says, the skill of the preacher, talk about mega churches, the skill of the preacher. And he mentioned other churches, another movement that started. And I began to break that down. I realized, I said, you know what? When you listen to those guys, they ain't got the fire we got. They're lecturers, but all they do is use the word. Every last one of them. He mentioned a particular one, right? You look at the, all their speakers. All they do is use the word and let the Holy Ghost do what he's called to do. So I learned to let the Holy Ghost do what he wants to do. The last one, and this is, is uh, and I skipped this, mark down, uh, Mark 11, 22. You can have that for later. 
We well, said you got to learn to speak to our mountains, amen. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. We got to work the word. He said in Zechariah 4, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. What do you mean by your spirit? Well, the spirit is the author of the word. Most people think Jesus wrote the Bible. Jesus didn't write the Bible. That wouldn't be good. Atheists will have something to say to us if Jesus wrote the Bible. It would be like he wrote his own thing. But instead he let witnesses write about him. The Holy Ghost is the author of the word. Because he knows God. He knows Jesus. He knows the plan of God. And at least Jesus out of the picture where he can get glory because we are able to move just like him. All he did was come to show us everywhere in the Bible he came to show us what a son or a daughter of God is able to do on the earth. Whether we believe it or not it's up to us, but it's there. Finally, praying in the Spirit. That's the one I wanted to hear for just about three minutes. Praying in the Spirit. So many people think praying in the Spirit is speaking in tongues. It is not. Uh, and that's part of it. You can pray in the Spirit by speaking in tongues. But to pray in the Spirit in the Hebrew means to be one. It means to be one. It means that we become. I become so surrendered that that Word of God, I'm able to assimilate with God's Word. When I get up in the morning and I pray, the Holy Spirit is able to drop the thoughts of God into my thoughts. And I didn't know that before. So you know what? I would get up and do my own thing and then try to get a hold of God. But now when I rise up, I realize that God's going to transfer His thoughts into my thoughts. It gets down into my heart and I'm on an assignment every morning and every day. shield of faith, I skipped it, was this. Is that the shield of faith, that thing was as big as a door when they had their shield of faith. It said they could quench every fiery dart. Well, they used to dip it in this oil ointment. Hello. That's what we need to dip our, our shield, our faith in the oil tonight. And they put water on it, and that's what would quench the fiery earth. Now that door, that spoke to me when I seen it was big as a door. Because that door means that every time we come to pray, there are doors that are available to us. It's like in Fremont when I said, there are spiritual doors. People just don't know how to walk into them. There's doors where, I said there's a push door where you use physical strength. And everybody know about push, right? Pray until something happens because God was speaking to me. Amen. Push until, you know, so pray until something happens. And there's other doors that people don't realize that even exist. We just come sometimes and we just pray. And you know what? you got to think, what if you were God? Would you want people to just come and do the same thing? We've been saying now for 15 years. And sometimes I, I go back and just to look. And it's a different crowd, but the same noise. Mm. Mm. Wow. They always say, we want a manifestation, we want revival. If we want revival, you got to understand, you can only revive something that's dead. So we got to identify what's dead. Amen. What's dead? Is it our knowledge? Because yes. I've been leading to say that our knowledge is kind of low right now. Because we're victory outreach, right? Come on, they said this. Our knowledge is kind of low. So we need to know the Bible. Yes. Because God said that Jeremiah went to I watch over my word to perform it. So when we pray, we got to pray the word, man. we got to pray the word. Watch God move tonight when we go back into prayer. And you let God pour a word into you. Let him pour a word into you. That turtle effect that they used to do with the shield, this is why I, I am with this. I won't even go into the other stuff. The shield was locked together. Everybody in here Everybody in here would have a shield if you were in that Roman army that Paul was talking about. And it had these little jagged edges on both sides. And it was built so people knew if they were in the right place that they were able to lock together and they'd be able to protect everyone. They call it the turtle effect. That's why when you see gladiator movies and all that, they would come together. And, and that's what we're going to learn as Christians. That's what Paul was trying to tell us. He wasn't trying to tell us just to get suited and booted in armor. Because there's a lot of people that come to church in armor and it looks all armor all up. Ain't no bits, ain't no dirt, ain't nothing. They ain't going to the battle. It's a playground, not a battleground. And then they leave. And then, you know, we got pastors and all of a sudden, hey, we need y'all to pray. I, I'm, I'm glad for the last few months I ain't had to say, I need y'all to pray. I can tell they're praying. I can tell that that's what I pray. They're praying because whenever I lay hands on people, there is always, whether it's a sinner or a saint, there's a move of God that nobody can deny. And I thank God for that. And I want that for every one of us. Because this region, even though we're not in it, before it was a region, there was things that God was beginning to do back in the day. There was, there was something that we couldn't put our finger on it, but it was starting to manifest and what nobody else doing what we were doing. Well, nobody else doing that. They're, they're, I remember those looking for the old video. You can see it on our YouTube. 
uh, this rich standing in the corner over there. Those are the days when uh, God was really manifesting something. And now it's time to get the fire back. Now it's time to change the oil. Now it's time to put the armor on. Now it's going to have a lot of shield. Now it's going to have a you know, Truth got to hold. 